Hello, my name is Scott Vandehei, and I'm a front-end developer at Cloud4. Today, I would like to talk to you about the simple way to handle responsive images. The responsive images spec is fantastic, and it covers a load of use cases, but in my experience, most of the time, you'll only need to understand one of them, serving a different sized copy of the same image, depending on the user's viewport width. Like here, you can see that the image served, the same image is served on the phone, as well as on the laptop, even though their screen sizes are wildly different. If you optimize the image for the phone, it'll be too small for the laptop. But if you optimize for the laptop, then you're sending a huge image file to the phone. Ideally, what we would do is serve an appropriately sized image to each device. We call this resolution switching, and you can accomplish it using the source set and sizes attributes. The source set attribute provides the browser with a set of sources to choose from, and what size each of those sources is. It's a comma-separated list of URLs paired with widths. By providing a collection of image assets this way, you're saying to the browser, I'm giving you a list of images, and I trust you to pick the best one. The browser will choose the best image based on a complex set of criteria, including what size the image is displayed to the user at their current viewport size, and whether the user has a high resolution display or not. It's smart enough to know that if the image will be displayed at 800 pixels wide, it should choose an asset from the list that's at least 800 pixels wide. It also knows how to handle high density screens. For example, if the image will be displayed at 320 pixels wide on a retina device, it should choose an asset that is at least 640 pixels wide. So you don't need to worry about 1x and 2x images. All you have to do is provide a good set of images and the browser will do the rest. Now you may have noticed we still have a source attribute. I wonder if it's still needed. The answer is that if you provide a source set attribute, modern browsers will replace the source value in the DOM with the image that is selected from the source set. So modern browsers will ignore the value you specify in the source attribute in favor of source set. But source is still important for browsers that don't support responsive images. These older browsers will ignore the source set and sizes attributes because they can't understand them. However, they do understand the source attribute, so you can provide a single image as fallback for them. I usually pick the smallest image that will still look good on a non-retina desktop monitor. Now the source set attribute is all well and good, but when the browser is reading your HTML, it doesn't know if you've used CSS to, say, scale your image to be 50% of the width of the screen. That's where the sizes attribute comes in. It's how we give the browser a hint about how the image will be rendered after the CSS is applied. The sizes attribute is a comma-separated list of media conditions paired with widths. For example, this first one says, if the viewport is at least 1024 pixels wide, then the image will be 780 pixels wide. The last item on your list does not need a media condition. If you provide a width and leave the media condition off, it will be treated as a default width to use if nothing else matches. You can also use relative widths, such as 50VW, which says the image will be 50% of the viewport width. You could even use calc for more complex situations such as accounting for padding around the image. The browser will work its way down this list and apply the first item that matches the viewport. So using this sizes attribute, if the user is on a large desktop display, the browser matches the first item on the list and knows the image will be 780 pixels wide. An iPad in standard vertical orientation is 768 pixels wide. So the browser would skip the first item but match the second, which says the image will be 390 pixels wide. A user on a typical mobile device wouldn't match either of the first two and would land on the last one, the default one, which says the image will be 50% of the viewport width. Of course, these are just examples. The real world is messy. A user on a large display with a narrow window might get a smaller image. A user on an iPad Pro might get the large image when holding the tablet in landscape mode, the medium image when holding in portrait mode, 
and the small image if using the browser in a split screen mode. Some larger phones will qualify for the second rule when held in landscape mode. But that's the beauty of this system. You don't have to think about all these different form factors. You only have to consider what size the image will display based on the viewport width. Let's address some frequently asked questions. How could you generate all these image assets? Well, you've got several options. You could create them by hand. You could use a responsive image generator tool, or you could use an image CDN. To generate your images by hand, just open the original image in Photoshop or the editor of your choice and export it at all the sizes you need. That can be a bit time consuming, so you may want to use a tool to generate your images. Several tools will do this for you, but the one I like best is the Responsive Image Breakpoints Generator from Cloudinary. It will automatically examine your image and decide what the optimal set of assets is to provide the best balance between file size and resolution. You can tweak the setting to control how many images it generates, and then you can download those images to use. Another option is to host your images in a CDN, such as Cloudinary or Imagix. When using a service like this, you upload the highest resolution image you have to the CDN, and then you can request resized versions of the image using URL parameters. You don't have to do any of the work. You just tell the CDN what size you want the image to be rendered at. Next question. How many image assets should you provide, and what size should they be? Well. It's a tough question. If you provide too many assets, you're needlessly bloating the markup with a lot of assets that might never be used. But if you provide too few, then you might be forcing your users to download larger images than they need. If you're dealing with a single image and can provide custom markup for that image, then I would recommend the responsive image breakpoint generator tool I mentioned before. It will automatically generate a variety of sizes for you and produce the source set attribute for you. If you're hosting your images on Cloudinary, you can even use their API to run that generator on the images when you upload them. Then you save the response from the API to dynamically populate your source set and sizes attributes. But in my experience, it's much more common to find yourself working in a CMS or a web app where you don't know the exact image that will be displayed, just the slot it will be displayed in. In that case, I would recommend picking a standard array of image sizes. In the past, I've used 320, 640, 960, 1280, etc., because they're round numbers that follow a logical progression. This set covers sizes from mobile to full bleed desktop. However, a standard array of sizes will always be less efficient than a customized one. In this case, while the numbers are logical, there's a progressively larger file size increase because when you double the width, you quadruple the pixels. As a result, if you must choose a standard size array, you may want to consider one that has fewer assets at small sizes and more assets at larger sizes. What about the sizes attribute? How do you figure that out? Well, you'll need to determine that by looking at your actual CSS to see how wide the image is displayed at various breakpoints. Sometimes this is determined by the width of the image itself. In this case, this CSS says your image has two fixed sizes, 320 and 640. These can be reflected directly on your sizes attribute. So you can see here, min width 37.5m, 640 pix, default 320 pix. Nice and simple. However, <laughs> you'll often find that your image is fluid and inherits its width from the container. In this example, assuming container is the only element that affects the image's width, you can just apply the width of the container to the image. So this CSS says the image is 100% wide, the container starts at 100% wide with one rem of padding, but then at the 37.5m breakpoint, it changes to 50% wide. You can put that again in the sizes attribute directly. Note that we're also subtracting the width of the padding from the container width. That's where that two rem comes from. 
you may or may not need to do this depending on how much padding affects the overall width in the spec it's really common to see them use more generic you know 20 vw you know 80 vw sizes because often the you know 20 or 30 or 40 pixels of width doesn't really affect the difference if there's in this example only three images to choose from as you can see this is going to depend greatly on your specific layout I usually work backwards by inspecting the image in my browser's dev tools to work out what breakpoints affect the width of the image. Which naturally brings us to our next question. How do you check your work? Well, as you can imagine, testing whether you got your responsive images code can be tricky and time consuming. Thankfully, there is a tool to make it easy. It's called the Responsive Image Linter. It's a bookmarklet that you add to your browser and use on your site. And when you trigger it, it will automatically scan your page at a variety of different viewport sizes and pixel densities to test your images. Then it will give you a report showing every image on your page and whether they're properly resizing. If they're not, it'll tell you what's wrong and even make suggestions for how to fix it. Now, I've found the suggestions are a little bit hit or miss. Sometimes they're not quite what I would have written myself, but at the very least, it's helpful for diagnosing, hey, you said this image was going to be 320 pixels wide at the smallest viewport, but it's not. Well, now you've got a point to go check in your browser and figure out what's wrong between the sizes attribute you provided and how the image is actually rendering. So highly recommend it. We use this tool at Cloud4 all the time. As you can see, the combination of the source set and sizes attributes give you a lot of bang for your buck. By adding just two attributes, you tell the browser at this, whoops, <laughs> at this screen size, the image will be this wide. So please choose the best option from this list of images. Now there's a lot more power available if you need to do more complicated things, such as serving modern image formats like WebP or serving different images at different screen sizes. If you need details on those use cases, I strongly recommend Jason Grigsby's Responsive Images 101 series on cloud4.com. Thanks for listening. I'll catch you next time.